They will use all kinds of sorts of excuses, just like the new modern Bible versionists do. Yes, they do. So the world worship what the, the images of favorite actors say, making evil look good and, and, and good look evil. So uh, Hollywood is winning your hearts to hate God, guys. So, so, so I try and stay away from a lot of that Hollywood stuff because they're teaching you lies. Teaching you lies. Teaching you that they're going to hate this book if you keep watching uh, Hollywood movies. They will. Revelation 11, 8 to 10. Revelation 11, 8 to 10. <clears throat> and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which is spiritually, which spiritually is called Sodom in Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. And in Dutch, het een hun dood lichaam zal in liggen op de straat de grootstad. The geestelijk genoemd word Sodoma in Egypt, al waar ook ons Heer Christ is. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom in Egypt, where our Lord is crucified. Where our Lord is crucified? Our Lord is crucified? No, it's our Lord was crucified. Why did they change that? Verse 9. And they... Of people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves in the King James. And Staten telling is, in the mensa out the Vulcan, in Chaslachen, in Talen, in Nashon, Zellen, Hun Dodlichem, Zain Dridachen, and a Halven, in Zellen Nit to Latin. That hun dode lichem in graven gelegd worden. Which is translated to, and the people of all kindreds and tongues shall, uh, and the people of all of the nations and families and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half, and will not let their dead bodies be buried in graves. Hmm. And the people of the nations? No, that's not what God said. And the kindreds and tongues. Huh. Okay, verse 10. King James, verse 10. And they that dwelt upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts to one another because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. So what is God going to do to these actors that, that most of the people in the world love and follow? Let's look at that. Isaiah, that's back in the book of Isaiah 2.11. What's going to happen to all these actors you're following and following their sayings and stuff? Isaiah 2.11. <clears throat> and you, that's that for telling people you're going to the movies. You're what? You're taking in all this Hollywood stuff and you're watching all the sports games on TV. I know you are. Because you even do it on Sunday. You let your kids watch all the movies too. Encourage them to watch the movies. Isaiah 2.11 2.11 The lofty looks of man shall be humbled and the haughtiness of men shall be bowed down and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. And verse 12 For the day of the Lord of hosts shall be upon everyone that is proud and lofty and upon everyone that is lifted up and he shall be brought low. That's what's going to happen to these people. So don't be following them. You don't want to be following them at this time. Boy, you don't want to be following them at all because they're going to be brought down low. And what does the Staten Vertelling say? Want the dachter des Herren, the Heersharen, zal zijn tegen alle who waardig en who in tegen al vergeven op dat het verderd wordt word. in zijn wen zijn for the day the lord of hosts shall be lifted up on everyone high and high and on all that he may be humbled trots der verheven is proud and exalted trots in verheven so why are they putting who varading the who? 
Then verse 13. And upon all the cedars of Lebanon that are high and lifted up, and upon all the oaks of Bashan. And instead of telling, in tegen al chude verheven cedarin van Lebanon, and tegen al eklin van Basan. And against all the high and high cedars of Lebanon, and against all the oaks of Bashan. That's not what God said. He said upon, not against. The difference between upon and, and, and against. <coughs> King James Version, and upon the high mountains, and upon the hills that are all lifted up. Satan retelling, and tegen ala chubergen, and tegen ala ver... They're going against again and against. Uh, 15, and upon every high tower, and upon every fenced wall. And Staten for telling, and tegen ala chu toren, and tegen ala vasta mur, and against every high tower, and against every fast wall. What? Om heid is fenced in Dutch. Om heid is fenced in Dutch. They're calling it a fast wall? I don't know, maybe that's something to translate it, but Om heid is fenced. Um, hey, this fence. Why not use the right word in there? They had that word back then in, 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 in 1638. Why didn't they use it? King James verse 16, and upon all the ships of Tarshish, and upon all pleasant pictures. Staten for telling, and tegen alla shapen van Tarsus, and tegen alla geweest schilderen, and against all the ships of Tarshish, and against all the desired paintings. So, <coughs> they changed pictures to paintings, and again, against. And again, they're using against. And the loftiness of man shall be bowed down, and the haughtiness of men shall be made low, and the Lord alone shall be exalted that day. And that telling is, in the hoge der mensen zal gebon, gebogen, en hoge der mannen zal verneerde worden, en geer alleen zal in de dag vergeven zijn. And the majesty of men shall bow down, and the majesty of men shall be humbled, and the Lord alone will be exalted in that day. So they changed loftiness and haughtiness both to majesty. You see that? Second Samuel ten eighteen, King James Version. Let's check this out now. Second Samuel ten eighteen. Second Samuel ten eighteen. And the Syrians fled before Israel. I'm going to show you the Staten telling is a Catholic text now. And the Syrians fled, fled before Israel. And David slew the men of 700 chariots of the Syrians and 40,000 horsemen and smote Shobak, the captain of their host, which died there. And what does the Staten telling say? David slew the men of 700 chariots, right? The men. How many men are on 700 chariots? David slew the men. He didn't slew, slay the chariots. Watch what the Staten telling says. But the Syrians floated for Israel's and Chesed, Seth, Zicht. And David were slow than the Syrians, seven hundred wagon in. David killed the wagon, the, the, the chariots? And were they dozen rutoren, rutoren. Darto slachhe sabot, hun sabok, hun kreeks overst that he al der stereth. But the Syrians fled before Israel. And David slew the Syrians 700 chariots and 40,000 horsemen to the struck Sabok, their captain of war. And he struck Sabok, their captain of war, and he died there. And then let's look at, uh, let's look at the, the witness scripture. The witness scripture of that would be in 1 Chronicles 19.18. 1 Chronicles, Kings Chronicles 19. 18. Is, but the Syri Syrians fled before Israel, and David slew of the Syri Syrians 7,000 men who fought in chariots, and 40,000 footmen, and killed Stop Hak, the captain of the host. And what does Staten Vertelling say? The Staten, Ver the Staten Vertelling says, Doch the Syrians bloated for the Anhesek van Israel, and David was slaughtered. Van the Syrian Syrians, seven thousand wagonen, and were 
thousand men and to foot. Their two daughter by Suffolk in Christ over rest, over rest. But the Syrians fled before Israel, and David slew the Syrian of the Syrians seven thousand chariots. David killed the chariots. No, David didn't kill the chariots and forty thousand men on foot. For this he killed Sophash, the captain of the army. Yeah, he killed forty thousand footmen. Yeah, but he didn't kill uh, uh, seven thousand chariots. He slew. 7,000 men who fought in chariots. You see, you see how they corrupted God's word? Just exactly like the Catholic text does. This comes from the Vaticanus. This is Catholic text in the Staten Vertelling. This is a Catholic book. You've got to cut, cross these Catholic words out and put in God's pure, perfect words. Or you're only being saved, man. You can't be saved by this book. You're going to go through the tribulation. You understand that? That's why you, most of you guys believe in the tribulation. That great tribulation, which isn't even called the great tribulation in God's word. The Great Tribulation, you're going to have to go through it to get tried. No, that's Catholic teaching. That's catechism. That's catechism that you've got to be purified here on earth. That's catechism. That is not Bible Christianity. The true Christians. That is not, not Bible believers. Not for Bible believers. John 3.36. I'm going to go to the New Testament now for John 3.36 and see how they messed that up. <coughs> John 3, 36. <clears throat> he that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth in him. You know what? That's why you're going to go through the post trib rapture. The wrath of God abideth on you. Yeah. So, and why do I say that? Let's look at what the Dutch Statin Vertelling says. Die in the Son Halof, die heft in Urgeet leven, maar die den Son ook aangehoorzaam is, die zal het leven niet zien, maar de toorn Gods blijft op hem. He who believes in the Son has eternal life, but he who disobeys the Son shall not see. Disobeys the Son? That's not what God said. Believeth not the Son. It's belief. Faith. Yeah. He, who disobeys the Son shall not see life but the wrath of God. So you're saying obey the Son. Who's the Son? You're putting yourself in the place of Jesus in your churches. Just like the Catholic priests do. And you're getting them to believe your words. What you're saying. Your interpretation of God's word. God said his word is not open to private interpretation. No, 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 no. We trust God. Not an interpreter. You don't sit up there in front of your church and interpret the word of God for people your way. You do it God's way, with God's words. Not with wicked statin for telling words. Now, who disobeys the son is a Catholic corrupt teacher. They want you to think that the pastor or the priest is, is, is the son and not disobey him. That's exactly what they're doing. And I, I, we have first, I mean, my family has first-hand experience this. We went to a church a little bit north of Lelydorp here, about four kilometers north of Lelydorp, called God's Reign of the Ark. And the pastor reprimanded my family and I because they thought that I was, I, was, I was listening to another man somewhere on YouTube and I wasn't listening to him. But I was listening to God's words. I was comparing what he said to God's words and his Staten Vertelling book, corrupt book, to God's words. So what this pastor actually believed is only the truth can come through him and his corrupt Staten Vertelling. So we had to leave that church. We had to get out of there. Oh boy, God's blessed us so much since then because we can see... It's easy to see all truth now. <coughs> and then uh, we're going to go to uh, Isaiah 9, 4 to 6. We're going to look at prophecy, how it wrecked the prophecy here. Isaiah 4, 9 to 6. Isaiah 9, 4 to 6, sorry. Isaiah 9, 4 to 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. What does that foretelling do with that? Want the kind is on haboren, and son is on haven, and the hair, hair shut up is zain shoulder, and in men not. Zain nam wonderlijk, rand, sterk God, 
father der Uchi, vrid divorced. For a child is born to us, a son is given to us, and dominion is on his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Strong God, Father of Eternity, Prince of Peace. Where's the Father? Jesus is the everlasting Father. Where's the Father here? Where's the Father here? You call him Father of Eternity instead of the everlasting Father? A strong God instead of the mighty God? No, no, no. Where's the Father here? This is Catholic text. Revelation 7, 14. Revelation 7, 14. And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. And Staten telling? Does Staten telling say great tribulation? Let's take a look at that. And expect on him. Her, he waited, and he said the taught me. He said the taught me. This is said he had. The out the rote verdrukking common. The rote verdrukking common. And shall have him. Lange klare gewassen en hebben gewoon lange klare wit te maken in het blood des lambs. And I said unto him, Lord, you know. And he said unto me, these are they that came out of the great tribulation. That, that's changing God's word to the great tribulation instead of great tribulation. The great tribulation. No such wording in God's pure perfect words. And they have washed their long garments and have made their long garments white in the blood of the lamb. So there is no the great tribulation. It is Daniel's seven years week. Or the time of Jacob's trouble. Not the great tribulation. This is exactly, the Staten Vertelling is teaching you exactly the same thing. The new Bible versions do new gods. This is a new God. This is a new God after the King James. Yes, it's a new God. It's a Roman Catholic liar from the catechism. That's right, from this catechism. And I'm going to show you. I'm going to do a whole study on this catechism and how the Dutch Bible was influenced by it. A time of trial or, or purification of the church is in the catechism, which is exactly what post trippers teach too. Falling under the clutches of Rome. They teach... They teach that you yourself needs to be a co-redeemer. It's work salvation. You're a co-redeemer. You're calling yourself equal to Jesus Christ. Well, I've got to redeem myself too. I've got, I got to be purified through this time. Jesus said it's finished on the cross. It's finished on the cross. Roman Catholic lie. Roman Catholic wicked lie. Telling you you're a, co a time of trouble, your purification for the church. Let's see what the catechism says on that. Time of trouble, uh, purification of the church. Is Catechism 675, 675. Before Christ's second coming, the church must pass through a final trial that will shake the faith of many believers. The persecution that accompanies her pilgrimage on earth will unveil the mystery of iniquity. Mystery of iniquity is antichrist, yeah? Well, in the form of a religious deception offering men an apparent solution to their problems at the price of apostasy from the truth. The supreme religious deception is that the Antichrist, feudal messianism, messianism, by which God glorifies himself in place of God and of his Messiah come in the flesh. That's prosperity gospel. That's Catholic teaching. That's post-trib. It's, it's, all, it's all wickedness. It's all out of the catechism, what, what, what the Dutch pastors are teaching. It's all out of the catechism. And uh, they'll also tell you that, uh, oh yeah, the pre-trib... The pre uh, Belief is, is, a, is a Roman Catholic Jesuit teaching. It's not. The Roman Catholics teach that you go through the Great Tribulation. Exactly what the, uh, these same pastors are teaching you today. They're teaching a Catholic doctrine. Jesus said it's finished and the cross is finished. So you're being led to the slaughter of the Antichrist by not believing every word of this King James Bible. It's pure and perfect already. 
You just take the words in the King James Bible, you find the mistakes in your stat and telling or your head book, you cross them off and you put God's pure words there. And then you got a pure Bible in Dutch. Use Google Translate, translate it yourself so it makes sense. Use God's words, not man's words. So why would a Bible being translated into Dutch by a complete translation team be following all of Luther's mistakes? Like we talked about in part 10. They're following all of Luther's mistakes and follow Catholic text and wording in, from the Vaticanus. Why do they do that? Were the two Bible translators that wanted the King James Bible in Dutch? Were they poisoned? They died before the translation started. They were poisoned. They just that's, mysteriously died. They died before the translation started. I sincerely believe they were poisoned. They were poisoned so the Roman Catholics could insert their dogma into here. You be the judge. You be the judge. I've given you all the evidence. You be the judge. Now I'm going to end with uh, Hebrews 1.8 right here. But unto the Son, he saith, thy, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. Hebrews 1.8. Let's take a look at that. Hebrews 1.8. Uh, in the Staten telling it's Utron Ochod. is Ala Chui Uechet. The shepherd of Van Kroner Lake is in Recta Shaper. Shepherd. The scepter of your kingdom is a straight creator? Huh? How do you get that? How, do you, how did they change God's word? Even they didn't even mess this up, which proves that the Trinity is bogus. You know, he's saying, but unto the Son, he saith, thy throne, O God. God is saying to the Son, he's God. God is admitting that the Son is God himself. He's admitting he's himself. He's part of the Trinity. So God the Spirit, uh, so God the Soul, to God the Son, through the Holy Ghost speaking to us. See? It's just that simple. The Trinity is not three separate persons. It's not three separate persons like these catechism teachers are teaching you. The Catholic teaching is teaching you. It's not. So, Father God, thank you for this today. And I don't know who it's for, but if someone out there, if it touches you and gives you the truth, I'll be the, all the glory be to God. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. The Father is the one who delivered. That's why He gets the praise. We praise the Father. We praise the Son. But we praise the Father because it's the Father who sent the Son. It's the Father who... And that's why we know that the Father is not Jesus and Jesus is not the Father. We've got these spiritual infants out there teaching that nonsense. A lot of them on YouTube, but you'll find it all over the place. The whole apostolic movement tries to say Jesus is the Father and Father is Jesus. Uh, it's heretical. You're a heretic if you teach that nonsense. And you cause confusion. Because I see a baptism where Jesus is in the water being baptized and the Father speaks from heaven. You read what? Uh, what were we reading the other day, John? Was it uh, chapter 6? Where Jesus repeatedly refers to the Father as a separate person. And yet you're supposed to check your brain in and believe the nonsense that the Father and Jesus are the same. And how the Trinity is one God in three persons. And I found something in the Bible, and I said, oh, this is good. And then I found something else, and I said, oh, oh, yay. And so I found these, and I wanted to share this. And I'll do that today. I'll give you two scriptures to prove that God is one God in three persons. And uh, I believe that. I've always believed that. I've described God as making man in his image. And man has three parts, so God has the three parts of man. But also, God can do something that man can't do. God can divide up the three separate parts that makes up himself into three distinct persons. God the Father, ladies and gentlemen, is a person, and he is a triune being by himself, separate from the Son and the Holy Ghost. So what did you say? Hear it, hear it, hear it. See, God the Father is a person. God the Son is a person. God the Holy Ghost is a person. But each one of them is a triune being by himself. 
if I can shock you, and maybe I should, there's nine of them. You read what? Uh, what were we reading the other day, John? Was it uh, chapter 6? Where Jesus repeatedly refers to the Father as a separate person. And yet you're supposed to check your brain in and believe the nonsense that the Father and Jesus are the same. into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And the books were opened. And another book was opened which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire.